Hi guys, today I will talk about uh, some precision tools, uh, calipers. As I like to say, uh, one good measurement is uh, better than a thousand expert opinions and that's often the, the case. So I will talk about how to select a decent quality caliper and show a few models. First thing that I wish to briefly discuss is the difference between precision and accuracy. How do I explain that? Uh, not all the tools are precise and not all the tools are accurate, but those are two uh, often, how to say, mixed up uh, attributes, but they are, they are different. For example, if I have a distance that I need to measure that is exactly 6 millimeters, and I have a tool that always shows me 6.1 millimeter, no matter how many times I measure, that tool is very precise, but it is not accurate. On the other hand, if I also measure 6 millimeter uh, width and I have a tool that sometimes shows 6.05 millimeters and sometimes 5.95 millimeters, that tool is more accurate than the tool I had previously described, but it is less precise. And so the, those are the basic differences between being precise and accurate. Okay, so this is the boring theory now. And now let's see about uh, uh, tools. These uh, calipers are considered to be, because calipers are considered to be high precision tools, so they usually come in sort of a protective package and they should be carefully stored. However, I usually hang them on a, a workshop wall somewhere where they're not li likely to be trashed, where they are not exposed to extreme heat or cold or some grinding stuff flying on them and so on. But I like to have them at hand, so I usually don't keep them in a box. It's very inconvenient for me. I'm not saying it's the right way to do it, but that's the way I do it. And here I have two tools. And the main difference is that this one is digital and this one is analog. Okay, now I will give you uh, a, a brief explanation of the difference between analog and digital tools by uh, giving you just a second to tell me what time it is. Okay, I'm not sure which one you got, but uh, my, my principle and why I like uh, analog tools, the advantage of analog tool tools is that they give you the ballpark uh, value very quickly, very easily. By the way, if you manage to stop the video, see the, the points, this watch is set to summertime always, it's in my garage, and this is what I wear, and this one is adjusted to our current winter time, so it's one hour behind. But anyway, uh, analog tools let you give uh, see the ballpark value very quickly and very easily and sometimes that is very convenient. For example, when I measure some voltages of, of some appliance and I wish to get, get it at a few stops, a few places, or uh, when I measure the resistance or when I'm uh, driving and or riding a motorbike and I want to see how fast I'm going or uh, even more importantly for motorcycles, for me at least, the revolutions per minute, the RPMs of the, the engine, I prefer to have digital uh, instruments because they just uh, with a glance, split second, can give me the ballpark value so that I know if I'm very off or not. But uh, uh, the advantage of digital instruments is that when you need to have a precise reading and you will dedicate a bit more time and concentration to read the result, digital instruments let you read that a bit more fast in that case than the analog. So here I can see the one of the these important measures like a small arrow for for time and that's usually enough for me to see if it's like half past 12, uh, half past 11, quarter to 12 and so on. But if I want to see the exact minute I can get that reading faster from a digital tool like this. And the same principle goes for the measuring tools. So because I usually use these kinds of calipers to get very accurate readings, I usually find it more convenient to use a digital caliper. But this comes in handy sometimes when I need to make a lot of quick measurements and I just see where the 
the greatest mark on the scale is so that's that's about it and when you're trying to get a good quality measurement tool if you're using an analog uh, the first thing to do is to align the tool to make it all the way closed and to make sure that and to make sure that the zero on the tool is aligned with the zero on this caliper when this gets worn this thing usually goes further up and this tool has like small screws so you can move this slightly and adjust at least in theory I haven't tried doing that on this tool but that's generally what that is used for so you can calibrate the tool to zero it in and another thing to pay attention to is to make sure that these jaws are all the way parallel that you don't see any light shining through if there is a gap or if there's an angle that means the tool is not a high quality built or that it is very worn so this that's what creates a lot of production costs when making these tools that these need to be perfectly parallel very well machined very precisely machined and the way to read these analog calipers for example here I, I've locked it in place they have this sort of thing that you can use to to lock it in place when you have a measurement to read it at your convenience and now we have here a, me a measurement and the thing to, to do is to first see to first see the the greatest mark here we have one two three the the zero is between three and four that means we have three millimeters and a bit of a change and how much change is it now I'm looking for the next one that aligns and because the zero is very close to four I know that I should be looking at the the end it's probably 4.9 or something let me see yes I'm trying to see which one of these marks aligns perfectly with any mark here and that is the exact measurement that is how this tool works I'm not sure if I've explained this uh, very properly but that is the the basic principle while with a tool like this you just read what it says uh, by the way here is the the model of this tool it's about 35 dollars that is a reasonably priced uh, digital caliper very cheap models are not very accurate nor very precise and this is a supermarket store one that cost about ten dollars and it is of decent quality and it not not too bad not too bad the measuring error of both is 0.02 millimeters roughly and that is uh, when you divide that by 25.4 you get the the accuracy in inches so I, I won't be calculating that now another thing to to note is that when you are measuring with these tools you cannot just let's give it tr a try here you cannot just align it and keep it like this in order to get a precise measurement you need to keep it pushed and engaged sort of so that you reduce the probability of any user error creating uh, an error in, in, in measuring by if this uh, gets a bit pushed out so don't push too hard but make sure that it's that you keep a bit of pressure and if I want to lock this the result in place I just screw this in not super tight but I screw it in and now I can let go and see it says 6.32 millimeters all right now I need to unscrew this and let go of this and check if my tool is zeroed in before measuring so I move it here keep a slight pressure the jaws are perfectly aligned and let's see it's zeroed in let's give this another measure measurement and let's see it says 6.33 the nominal, nominal size of this bearing ball is 6.35 millimeters so I have an error by of measurement by of 0 0.02 millimeters which is within the tolerances of these tools precision and accuracy and uh, 
This bearing ball is a very high quality, it's a G10 bearing ball, so I don't expect it to be a problem when, when it was machined. However, room temperature can affect the diameter of bearing balls because they are made of steel and steel expands when it's heated up and here it's relatively cold, about 15 degrees Celsius. I'm not sure about the other <laughs> measurement uh, uh, units, but in Celsius it's, uh, it's relatively cold. <laughs> So it may be that this has shrunk a bit. It may not be a problem with the tool. And the same principle goes for measuring with the analog tool. And here is how it's done. Locking it in place. Okay, let's give it a read. I'm not sure if you can catch it on camera. It says 6 point... Here, I'll try to show it. We see that this is between 6 and 7, the 0. So I know that it's 6 point something and I'm trying to see which one of these align. First we see all the marks go to the right hand side of the upper section marks and then when we get to the 4 and 5 we see that they are to the left of the upper section marks. I'm not sure if that's visible on camera. Let's see now. Maybe a bit zoom it in. Here, now I hope you can see that number 3 and number 4 seem most aligned. 3 is a bit to the right, 4 is a bit to the left of the upper section marks. I'm looking at this lower section. And so I'm, I would have to put this close to my face to see the exact value. Well, based on what I can read from this in instrument, I would say it's three point, oh, sorry, it's six point thirty eight, maybe, almost six point four, at least from what I can read. So that is the downside of analog calipers. They are higher, higher quality models than this one, but it's not very easy to quickly get an accurate reading out of this. So that is their downside. Let's try one more time. Yes, I get the same result. Uh, however, the good thing about analog calipers is that, is that they are usually, they're not more expensive, at least for all, as far as I know, uh, relative to their quality compared to digital ones. And another upside is that they cannot break down, only a hammer <laughs> or <laughs> incautious use can make them break down. While here we have some electronics, so a battery can leak if you leave it unused for a long time. A battery can run out of power and so it has a bit of downsides. Now I just want to show another thing that these tools have. You have a way to turn them on or off. This tool works automatically, so it's off now. But as soon as I move it, it turns on automatically. And you also have a thing to zero it in. So if you compress it all the way and it doesn't show zero, then let's let's give it a try. I'll now okay now if I compress it it shows minus. It's not zeroed in, so I compress it all the way and press that zero. And now I've reset it. So that's important to check when you are working with any of these tools to put them to zero and see if they really are showing a zero when they are completely enclosed. If that's not the case, you need to either take that into consideration when you're measuring or see what's what's the problem what the problem is. And another thing, uh, these tools have, I'll show with this one, it's more easy to see. They have a way to measure uh, outer diameter, as I've shown here. And this is how you measure it. So you just keep the, whatever it is you're measuring between these jaws. They also have a measurement of the inner diameter. And let's show that. Here we have a piece 
and if I want to measure its inner diameter, I use this and just insert it and, and measure it like that. I haven't uh, locked it in, so the proper way would be to lock it in and then I can make a reading. Uh, also, they can measure depth. For that, you use this tool. So that would be looking like this. If I put it on a flat surface, and now I need to move this until it hits the ground or the end of the hole that you're measuring and then you can read the result. And I can also measure the, the step by using the fact that this side is a bit higher than this side. So if I wish to measure the step, let's say I wish to measure how higher this part is compared to the rest of the tool, then I would need to put this on the bottom and, and push this end to hit here. This is a very small gap, but it is a certain amount of, of steps, so that is how to measure it. The same goes for the digital tool, it's just have this big bulge here, so it's not as easy to see, but the principle is the same. So that's it. I hope this helps. I think that uh, doing uh, precise measuring can, can help and it's important to know how to use the tools properly and I believe that this video may help some people. So that's all I have for you today. Thank you for watching and cheers.